Hey folks, what's going on? So I wanted to do another quick video for you guys continuing our last jig uh, discussion. So last time we were talking about swim jigs, um, kind of went over how I like to rig them and make them a little more compact for the fall season. So talked about big standard jigs, um, some of the trailers, stuff like that. But kind of my, in addition to the swim jig, the year round jig that's in my boat is I always keep a sort of arky style head jig. So I wanted to talk about that today and talk about sort of my flipping and skipping and pitching jig that I use throughout the year. Um, but before we dive into that, if you guys enjoy the video, be sure to go down and give a like and a comment on the video. Uh, let me know what you think of it. And also please consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, that'll make sure that you guys are getting notifications um, whenever I post new content, that way you aren't missing out on all this hopefully good content for you guys. But it's a great way to support the channel uh, and it also lets me know that you guys are enjoying it and you want to see more of this stuff. So. All right, with that, let's dive into this. Um, so I showed you last time, and if you haven't seen that video, I will put a link, it's one of these corners. Um, but I'll have a link up there for you guys. But I showed you guys my jig box last time, and I'm gonna try to show you. You can see I have a pretty simple color selection. So I keep swim jigs on the bottom here. This little, these two rows are swim jigs. You can see I keep it very simple. I basically have some black and blue some uh, like Okeechobee craw, you know, like green pumpkin and blue and a couple different shades of white swim jigs. Uh, that's about all that you need. Up here is all of my um, flipping and pitching and offshore jigs. So I, you know, I'll fish some football head jigs and stuff like that if I'm out deep. Usually those are all like three quarter ounce to one ounce jigs for fishing heavier current offshore and rock piles. I hardly ever fish them. Kind of my bread and butter is just the good old Arky style jig. Um, so this is a, a 3 8 ounce. This is probably one of my, this is actually the number one color that I fish. I've got like 20 of these in my box right now. Um, but something green pumpkin and then some accent color is usually a go-to for me. This is my preferred setup. This is a, a brown head. Um, I get these all from lure parts online. I build my own jigs. And then this is a green pumpkin purple skirt. You know, green pumpkin blue is a great color. Uh, green pumpkin chartreuse. You know, you just kind of have to pick something that you like. Basically, I'm looking to do two things with these jigs. They're either imitating crawdads or they're imitating bluegill. Um, at different times in the year, all those different bluegill or brim um, and crawdads are going to have different colors. So you're going to have to mix it up some, but by and large, bass are pretty stupid, to be honest. Um, they, I really don't think that the color matters as much um, as what we think it usually does. So I try to have something natural and something very bright that will stand out. This is my natural. I throw that green pumpkin purple everywhere. Um, I leave my skirts long on these. I don't pre-trim them. So this is all based on conditions. If it is um, real clear water, I can take a skirt like this and trim it out and cut it way down and make this into more of a finesse jig. Or I can go on ahead and um, leave it long like this, leave it kind of more of a mop style jig, uh, or you know, just kind of do what I did last time in that swim jig video, and I'll cut it up to about the same place. It all just kind of depends on the water conditions, also how aggressive the fish are. In the winter time, in colder months, I'm gonna go for something that's a little bit smaller profile generally. This time of the year when fish have a high metabolism, uh, you know, summer, late summer, I'm fishing a full-size jig with a big trailer um, and fishing this very aggressively, trying to capitalize on them eating a bigger meal. Uh, as far as weights, either a 3 8 ounce or a half ounce is what I prefer. I think a half ounce skips a little bit better, um, but there's times where, you know, they want it to be slowed down. Uh, so usually in the spring or months, you know, where I need to slow down, I'll throw that 3 8 ounce. Otherwise, I'm gonna throw a big half ounce jig. Um, that's my preferred. You can just cover a lot more water and move a lot more quickly with something like that. Uh, my other option is, in addition to this natural color, the other thing that I throw a lot is just a straight black or a black and blue jig. Uh, so there's a 3 8 ounce, same style head, that arky head, um, good for skipping under docks, good for flipping. You can fish these offshore. It's kind of the do everything. This is a finesse skirt. Um, this I'll trim down and make it pretty sparse. This is kind of my winter skirt. And then in the summertime, you know, when it's a little bit, uh, if we've got some sort of stain conditions, oh, here you go. This is one I was fishing the other day. 
If you've got stained wire conditions or I'm flipping the spring, I'm usually going to go with a black with a blue or purple or a mixture of uh, sort of skirt. And as you can see, big chunks. I like big chunks. Um, and you can see this one here, I've got it cut down pretty good. This is one that I've been fishing a lot this summer uh, over on Lake Barkley. But as far as jigs, that's it. I say with jigs, keep it extremely simple. People way over comp. Uh, complicate jigs. I really think that that style of bite you are just trying to, it is such a big presentation. You are similar to the swim jig. You are looking for aggressive, um, very hungry fish. And I don't think that you really need to do anything too fancy color wise. Pick a few colors that you are confident in um, that match a couple different water conditions that you normally fish in. Something for really dirty, sort of that in-between water, and something for gin clear water. Uh, for my gin clear water, I just go with a straight green pumpkin, and I will cut it down and make it a real finesse jig. But you really only need maybe three or four styles of jigs. I would say pick three eighth ounce and half ounce jigs. Pick a couple skirt colors, and you're good to go. Um, as far as trailers... I keep it pretty simple as well. Um, my number one trailer that I throw year round um, is the Zoom Super Chunk. So big flappers on it and it's got a nice meaty chunk that you can hook into. And you can hook these two ways. Uh, you can either thread them on like a normal trailer or just do the classic kind of old school hook it um, like a pork frog. So this is going to give you a much longer bait. You can see there. I know it looks kind of goofy if you haven't fished these. It looks goofy, but they absolutely munch this in the summertime. This is how I rig it in the summer. Um, or, you know, you can make this more compact, shorten up your skirt. Ouch, that was a sharp hook. Um, and you can thread this guy on straight, put it up on your hook keep, and you can see as a much more compact bait now. Um, again, I fish generally bigger chunk style trailers um i really like that zoom super chunk and usually i keep it in uh, three colors uh i like this one this is the green pumpkin purple i will keep it in a black and blue fleck and then i will just keep a straight green pumpkin um the other option that you have is something like what i've got tied on this rod that i was fishing the other day uh and this is just a net bait pack a chunk. Um, this has a little more kicking action, a little more flap to it just based on the craw uh, or the claw style on these. These have a really aggressive kicking action. Um, but pretty much all of my trailers, I prefer something that is very flat because this allows me to skip it um, and pitch it up under cover or into bushes and stuff much easier. If I'm out in open water, um, you know, there's some different modifications. You can run a big straight tail worm on these, uh, or even like a zoom old monster, a big curly tail worm works really good out on the ledges. Um, and I've been playing with that a lot this year and having a lot of luck on that as well. But keep it simple on the trailers, pick something that you like. If you like more of a beaver style bait, um, you know, like a, I don't know, reaction, innovation, sweet beaver. Um, that's one that I used to fish quite a bit more. I've just simplified and I can keep one bag, I uh, keep one Ziploc bag full of chunks and I've got three colors and basically two different styles. Um, as you saw on this one, every once in a while, I'll run an old school style zoom. Uh, I think they call this like the salty chunk or something like that. Um, but I pretty much run chunks on all my jigs. And then lastly here, wrapping up, uh, let's go over the tackle side. So I, Unlike my swim jigs, I very rarely fish braid. If it is really heavy vegetation and I am punching with like a one ounce jig or something like that uh, and using more of a punch style jig, I will beef this up and I will go with like a 50 pound braid uh, and a heavy, a 7.6 heavy action rod. But my go-to day in and day out is I fish a 7.3 medium heavy. Um, like I talked about last time, that 7.3 is a good length for me where I can skip it. Uh, you can go even shorter go down to a seven footer. I like that seven three because it still gives me enough leverage. I feel like I get a little more power on my hook sets. It probably isn't that much, but it's just a mental thing for me. Um, I like the seven three. I go with a medium heavy fast action. Uh, and I don't actually prefer a very high end rod for this. I like something that is more of a low modulus um, blank. The reason being is they're a little more shock resistant uh, than your high-end graphite. Um, 
they also are generally, even though this is a fast action, it is a softer rod uh, compared to your really high-end fast actions. Um, and that just has to do with the, the material that's being used. So this is actually a pretty cheap rod. Um, I like doing that as well because I can afford to put a lot more of them on the deck of my boat. Um, so, you know, if you've got an option of different price points, I will usually go for more of a mid-range price point rod. And you'll just have to play with it. But this is a fast action, medium heavy. Um, I run a 7.3 to one gear ratio on all of my casting reels for this. Um, this is really my bread and butter. Um, doesn't really matter. I I really don't think that your make of reel matters all that much with this. For the most part, I keep it pretty, pretty lower price point on all these. Um, I'm not making long casts. As long as, you know, this is something that spins good. Um, this one in particular has a seven bearing system in it. It's pretty smooth. Uh, a lot of this is going to be based on how you keep it up, but 7.3 to 1, that way you can pick that bait up. I still don't like the super high speed, like 8.1 to 1s or something like some people do. Um, I think you just have a little more power on this uh, based on the gear ratio. So 7.3 to 1. And then for the line, this is what I normally fish now. Uh, this is just I'm trying to remember what it is now. Uh, this is Trilene Big Game Mono actually is all that it is. Um, this is 20 pound. If I'm flipping really heavy cover in the spring, I will step this up to like 25 or 30 pound. Uh, kind of my standard is 20 pound. If it's really clear and I'm fishing more finesse jigs, I'll drop down to 15 pound. Um, but that's about all that it takes. And then one thing when you're doing this, it's going to be kind of hard to see, but do not load your jig reels all the way to the limit. Unless you're fishing offshore, uh, you don't need all that line. Leave a little space in your reel, and this is going to help a lot when you are skipping docks or flipping and pitching. Um, this is going to help you a lot to eliminate backlashes. If your reel is overfilled, it will tend to backlash a little bit more than if you keep it underfilled. Um, you know, maybe go like 70% or 80% capacity. Uh, and usually what I'll do is I'll run a backing because you go through lines so fast. So usually I will run a backing um, either like a, a Dacron braided backing in here or uh, just fill it up with monofilament um, that is always going to stay on the reel and I will just reload sections, you know, about 50 yard sections at a time of uh, the mono that I'm actually going to be flipping because this stuff gets chewed up extremely fast if you're fishing in heavy vegetation or not vegetation, heavy wood, um, like what we usually are doing around here, flipping in buck brush, uh, laydowns it just is very abusive on whatever line you use and you're going to go through a lot of it so that's why i opt for the mono it's a little bit cheaper it does just as well and in these short casts you really are not uh you're not gaining anything in my opinion by going to fluorocarbon you might as well just stick with the mono you're going to go through the floor just as fast um, and to be honest i like the little bit of stretch that this has in it i uh, i set the hook very hard a lot harder than i usually expect to um, and I have broken fluorocarbon a lot. So if you struggle with the fluorocarbon, don't think that you have to fish fluorocarbon because everybody tells you to. Uh, mono is just fine. I mean, people have been catching mono for decades uh, and have caught big bass on it for decades, flipping and pitching jigs. It works just fine. Uh, and that's what I've ended up on. So that's it, 7.3 medium heavy, 7.3 to one reel, 20 pound mono, go bigger if you're fishing really heavy stuff or it's dirty water and you're fishing heavy jigs, go lighter if it's really finesse situations. And then again, keep it simple with your jigs. Pick two or three colors that you like, three eighth ounce and half ounce jigs, uh, unless you're offshore and you need something real heavy, and then keep it simple on your trailers. I really just recommend fishing a chunk. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff out there, but pick what looks good to you. Pick a few colors that match up well. Um, I would say something just make sure you've got a very high contrast, like black and blue sort of situation and something more natural like that green pumpkin purple or green pumpkin blue, um, something like that. And that's about it for jigs. So that's what I throw for my flipping and pitching stuff. I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them down below. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and we'll see you on the next one. All right, everyone, tight lines. Oh.